People in the marina are used to their fair share of tourists and people coming to the Palace of Fine Arts to take photos. But armed robbers like this one have been coming there too, apparently. This one went after a photographer in the middle of a photo shoot with a bride and groom. KPIX 5's Betty, you went to the Palace of Fine Arts tonight to figure out if people over there are feeling safe. Betty? Well, the first thing we spotted when we got there tonight was glass on the street. And that's actually been the case every time I've visited the Palace of Fine Arts recently. Residents in the area say the relentless attacks and break ins are heartbreaking, and they're thinking about visiting the park less often. <laughs> Nice job, Liz. <laughs> Anna Chung and her daughters visit the Palace of Fine Arts at least once every day. They live just three blocks away. But after seeing video of the brazen attack on a wedding photographer in the middle of a shoot last week, she questioned whether she should keep up her family routine. That's unbelievable. We've seen car break ins around here, but that's kind of next level. Really unfortunate. It just kind of makes us feel a little bit. Hesitant as well, especially it's like dark earlier in the evening, and even tonight I was kind of wondering if we should do our lap around. On Monday, they did their lap around the tourist attraction, breezing by broken glass on the street, the aftermath of an all too common smash and grab. In fact, Anna's eight year old daughter witnessed a car break in a few months ago. He drove his car up to the other car, and then he kind of just broke and I couldn't really see because it was like he was so fast. I wondered why he did that because like everyone is looking. This year in the Northern Police District, which includes the marina, there have been more than 5,000 cases of larceny theft compared with nearly 4,800 during the same time period last year. Robberies have remained roughly the same. It made me feel kind of like unsafe. A little unsettled with little ones and um, definitely, yeah, a bit more worrisome than I'd like to. Around the park, there are signs warning people not to leave belongings in their cars. It's normal. For, we walk here almost daily and uh, there's always uh, glass. Within the past few months is when I um, decided to order pepper spray and I didn't used to do that and especially in this neighborhood. Adding to the frustration, Chief Bill Scott said recently that the department is more than 500 officers short. Sarah. So one of the things that we hear about from people in the city when they call police for crimes like that is that they can sometimes wait a really long time for them to show up. And I know you heard that again from someone else tonight, right? Just tonight, a resident said that on Sunday, she saw a traumatized family of tourists waiting well over an hour after their break-in. But unfortunately, this is very common here in the city. All right, Betty, thank you so much. We appreciate that report. Mm. Both, those, oh. both those guys. Well, look, look at that. that. Look at that. Come on. Oh. Well, the Spurs weren't having the best night. They were dominated by the Warriors at Chase Center. The Dubs led by as many as 41 points. Jordan Poole helped spark the offense tonight, scoring 36. Wasn't Steph Curry's best night tonight, but he is also on a roll. Today he was just named the NBA's Player of the Week in the Western Conference, a title he's held 19 times, so doing a little bit of light work there. Uh, still, even if it's not his best night, it's always pretty good. 16 points in 27 minutes. Let's, let's give him a... Let's yeah. get a little pass. <laughs> what kind of oh, something slack? Right. What do the kids say? Curry's been in his bag yeah. lately. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, they pulled the reins just a little bit. You know the numbers. He also had five assists in the game as they worked over San Antonio tonight on Run TMC Take Overnight. Forever Warriors, Tim Hardaway, Mitch Richmond, Chris Mullen, all Hall of Famers were on the mic. We had prep work um, last week when we talked to the producer <laughs> for about 45 minutes. He told us what we need to do and how we need to do it, and we wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Mullen, Miss Richmond, Tim Hardaway on the call. 49ers Christian McCaffrey, far left, Jimmy Garoppolo, George Kittle, Kyle Juszczyk hanging with the owner. First quarter, Warriors on the run, and Jordan Poole was feeling it tonight. Poole scored 14 in the opening quarter. And look at the lead, final minute of the half. Steph Curry from way downtown, bang! Warriors would open up a 29-point lead then. They scored 20 unanswered points late in the third. Curry, great pass, Jonathan Kaminga, who put the biscuit in the basket. 20 off the bench. 31-point lead early in the fourth. Jordan Poole's night on his bobblehead night. Scored a season-high 36. The Dubs have six wins, all at home. They rolled 132-95. Up next, Phoenix on Wednesday.
after the game, the team announced former number two overall pick James Wiseman will be sent down to the G League with the Santa Cruz Warriors for what Steve Kerr said could be an extended period of time. You know what they call the Santa Cruz Warriors? Mm. The C Dubs. All right, Fern, that's a good one. Thank you. A Berkeley police officer's alleged racist text messages are causing lots of drama just a day before the city is set to swear in a new police chief. Those misconduct accusations include arrest quotas and racial profiling in the department. The vice chair of the police accountability board says interim chief Jennifer Lewis, who's supposed to be confirmed tomorrow, was captain when the alleged misconduct happened. If that were the case and these allegations are substantiated and the chief did happen to know um, invariably, we're going to have to answer the question of what was her response. You know, ideally, as counsel, you know, delays um, the confirmation until the full investigation is conducted um, and as, as much information as possible is made public. Um, so folks can, you know, have an informed opinion about, you know, the chief, um, the department at large, um, and, and, and whether these allegations um, have merit. A former officer who says he was let go from the force is putting those text, me text messages on blast tonight, cl claiming to show a group chat with a sergeant allegedly making racist and anti-homeless comments. Lewis released a statement through the city spokesperson saying, if at any point during my tenure from officer to interim chief, I had become aware of these allegations, I would have immediately done my part to initiate an investigation. None of the alleged incidents occurred underneath my supervision. She added, I was the captain in charge of the operations division until January 2018, which was before any of the incidents in this subunit allegedly occurred. The city manager's office says the confirmation is still set for tomorrow night at 6 p.m. and that an external investigator has been hired to look into the allegations. Mayor Jesse Aragin also responding. He wrote he is outraged by the alleged texts. Okay, a live look tonight at both San Jose and Oakland. Almost a week since the election, and we still don't know who won for mayor in either of those cities. Not yet, anyway. We do have an idea of where the numbers are, though. In San Jose, Matt Mann's lead over Cindy Chavez has shrunk below two points. It was nearly three points just yesterday. In Oakland, the latest round of ranked choice voting puts Lauren Taylor ahead of Shang Tao, 52% to 48%. <laughs> Okay, in the Bay, we've seen a lot of sideshow videos of people taking over a street and then police are blocked out, not really doing anything to stop it or not able to. This is not that. San Jose police tried something new to stop a huge sideshow there this weekend. They boxed in the crowd, wrote over 700 tickets, and seized more than 500 cars. Neighbors tell Devin Feely they were relieved because they say sideshows like that make them feel like they are trapped in their homes. Rene Karimian says he has lived in this apartment complex near Saturday's sideshow with his wife and two children for seven years. <laughs> Scenes like these, he says, are sadly not uncommon. It's not easy to deal with these things, you know. It's, that's why you said it's too loud, and sometimes they, they do fireworks here. So, especially when it's after 12 a.m. What set Saturday's sideshow apart was the police response. San Jose police say more than 100 officers flooded the intersection of Monterey Highway and Branham Road, blocking every conceivable exit. The sideshow drivers and spectators were boxed in, trapped, and ticketed, all 720 of them. It's extremely difficult for the folks that live in these, in these neighborhoods, and unfortunately, some of these intersections are the ones that they get targeted time and time again, like Monterey and Branham. A city ordinance allows spectators at sideshows to be ticketed, a citation that could result in a $1,000 fine and six months in jail. The police department says the massive response requires coordination and a commitment of money and manpower, a challenge for a chronically understaffed department but necessary to send a message. Absolutely, we need the numbers, right? But if it wasn't for the heart of our officers to sit there and do the work and stay those extra hours, um, it wouldn't happen. From the air, the tire marks left at the intersection look like a road map of chaos and inconvenience to the people living nearby. Rene says he has often thought of moving, but with sky high rents, felt like he was at the mercy of the sideshows until now. They did something serious this time. So, uh, which I, I living here for seven years, I never saw this before. So this time looks like they've been serious. Hopefully they continue with this. In San Jose, Devin Feely, KPIX 5.
Oakland could become the latest city to fine sideshow spectators. The Public Safety Committee just voted to advance a measure similar to San Jose's. Within the last year or so, Vallejo, Pittsburgh, Antioch, Oakley, Santa Rosa, and Fremont have also passed ordinances targeting spectators and promoters. Wow, still ahead, an FBI investigation into this wild scene on a United flight from the Bay Area. Also, University of Virginia students in shock and absolute disbelief tonight. Three football players gunned down on campus, what police are saying tonight about the shooter. Clear skies over the Bay Area, Bay Area on this Monday evening. That means another chilly start to Tuesday morning, but more of a warm up in store for us tomorrow as offshore winds kick in. We'll track how strong those winds are going to be coming up in the first alert forecast. All right, Paul, thank you. And former First Lady Michelle Obama is tonight's guest on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Well, a woman holding a child apparently went on a rampage on board a flight out of San Francisco. The result, three people ended up getting checked out at a hospital, including a flight attendant. So this happened Sunday morning on board a United Airlines flight from San Francisco to Chicago. The airline says police took the disruptive passenger off the plane once it landed. There were multiple angles of this caught on different social media platforms. Right now, the FBI and the ATF are looking into this, and no word on what charges that unruly passenger will face.